With the chimney, you can see that it's got some nice character to it. It's got some edges missing and corners uh, broken out of it. You know, some random shapes going on. Well, it's actually really easy to build this because it was entirely started with just a box. So I'll just isolate this and skip down to the box and bring it in full screen. And in the wireframe, you can see it's just a standard box with a bunch of parts to it, you know, a bunch of segments in it. Uh, I did, I reset the pivot. I put the pivot in the middle of the box because I want to be able to uh, randomize the orientation of this in the array modifier. So I want to be able to flip it over 180 degrees on all three axes to make it look even more random. I did a smooth just to smooth it off to get rid of the hard edge. I found it kind of helped a little bit. And I did a little bit of a relax and you know relax the corners down. And that's going to help as well with the optimize. So the optimize then is just optimizing you know the shape down. Now something to note, optimize modifier won't respect the UVs. So in this case again, I'm using the triplanar OSL to be able to texture this. So I've optimized it to where I want. You can uh, use a face threshold, determine whether or not you want more or less in the edges, how much uh, you know, um, threshold you want for the optimization. So I wanted to bring it down quite low and it's giving me some of those nice chipped kind of pieces to it. Um, I then threw a smooth on there and the smooth is designed to get me some of those angles back so that I can get some nice angle kind of look to it. I did an array and I raid the bricks up so it staggers. Now, something you can do is you can stagger those back and forth using the alternating uh, setting in the position transform offset. So they're alternating back and forth. And then I actually used a symmetry to make the rest. And that's kind of cool because I use the radial symmetry to put it around in a circle and you can get it to all fit together properly. With the array having lots of randomization in it, in the scales, what you end up getting is this nice, you know, piece that is angled and looks really cool. So data channel there is the same as what we've been doing elsewhere, is that it's using a geoquantize to be able to, and a distort map, to be able to colorize the different bricks, just subtle, you know, changes to them as it goes. Now, I've also got another one in here where I'm getting the up vector again with the dot product, a bit of smoothing and scaling, but I'm doing that to darken the tops of the bricks. You can see they're a little bit darker. So I'm blending in a material there in the, uh, channel three again in the X. And so the idea being is you'd get soot on the top. So I'm just going to bring that back. To get the rest of this built, it was really cool because this is just a rectangle. So if I isolate that, you'll see that it's strictly just an, a rectangle. Now the reason it's a rectangle and you know no other shape, you know, not a box, is because when I extrude it, so I did a normalized spline to give myself segments around it, and I did an extrude, you can turn off cap so it doesn't have a top and a bottom. So this is the mortar. And then I did a conform and conformed it to the chimney itself. So it's stuck under the surface. And then I did a relax and relaxed it and did a bit of a push and pushed it in nicely. So that sits in and becomes my mortar. And so what's also nice, you'll notice if I move the bricks, you'll actually notice that the this you know, piece of flashing that goes around it is actually traveling up the roof angle until it hits too far up, but it's actually being conformed back down to the roof, which is kind of cool so that it, it fits. I can move, move the chimney around and that flashing will conform into the right place. So the trick there was just using the optimize to be able to get the bricks to look cool.